Hi everybody, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid projects and Felix the cat just as I was about to start recording he started attacking baby which caused a bunch of growling and howling and thumping noises so I'm holding him like a baby um, people have been asking me for a long time now how I got the property for the off-grid homestead and I've been promising this video for a while so here it is um, this is how I got my property it's a long story of uh, goes on for over four years the actual entire story but it began with a hurricane I don't remember if it was um, was it Sandy was the last one I think it was Sandy was the last one and or which one put me no no it was Irene yeah it was Hurricane Irene that caused me to lose my apartment where I was living and uh, it ruined the place I was living at the time so then I was living in an old colonial home sharing with some people and uh, the hurricane destroyed my antique shop I still wasn't off the grid yet, but and the off-grid project was just a dream at that time. But the hurricane destroyed my antique shop, and the water damage to the home was pretty bad, so it caused some major mold and mildew and rot damage, and people's health started declining in the house. So I, uh, at that time, because I'd lost my income at the, from the hurricane, I had my truck camper and I was looking for a place to sleep in my truck camper and I was looking on Craigslist at the time and I found a uh, it was funny because I was also looking for a trailer to put my stuff in Felix don't I keep pausing the video because the two cats are fighting when I'm trying to record now instead of rubbing on the camera because I put the camera tripod on the table and to try to trick out the cats, I put the big tripod over here on the side. They know better. So now they fight with each other when I'm doing video. Don't growl. People are watching you. So, stop. I was looking for a trailer on Craigslist at that time and thinking that I'm going to move into my truck camper and haul everything away myself with my truck, truck camper and... and boxes on a trailer and I found the ad for a trailer and it was here at this property where I'm at now and I was when I got here I saw the beautiful property when I was looking at the trailer and I asked if I could if they had a place for me to park my truck camper and live and they said well no but we have a room you could sleep in and so I ended up staying here for a while in the house up at the, the, the house on the other property um, but I always had a dream of of moving into the camper I, I, I got the while I was living at the house I got the old dilapidated camper for free and I had uh, been repairing some water damage in that and I always dreamed of living in it and starting the off-grid project in the meantime I got a new job and uh, that was my last job that I ever had and I um, worked on the camper a bit, put the potbelly stove in it and spent some time on that, started doing some electronics projects and experiments and solar heating experiments that first winter and then as a lot of you know a friend of mine got an apartment and convinced me to go and move in there with him and that was the actual beginnings of my off-grid life because I only stayed in that apartment six months before things went south with the uh, the owner. Um, I lost my job that I had had. I guess a year had gone by since I had gotten my my job. I lived up here. I don't even know how long I lived in that house. It must have been a, a good half year to eight months, nine months when I was living in the house or so and then I um, had this the, the job I had for a year so a lot of time passed 
And I was in the apartment only six months total. When I lost my job, in the middle of a blizzard, I was then, I was doing video in my, my camper, and my landlord said, uh, basically, he said he wanted to double my rent, so charge me exactly double. Knowing that I lost my job, but thinking I'm going to be all rich and huge on YouTube. Um, so he gave me an ultimatum, double my rent or get out. And so I moved out into the camper in the middle of a blizzard. And uh, he cut my chickens, my only source of food. He said, oh, you can start over again. And although I didn't owe him anything, um, he, was, uh, he was not very kind. So he left me with nothing, moved into the camper with no light and heat, and moved to the back here to the off-grid property. And then I was truly, fully off the grid. And that's when it really began. And uh, that's when I started doing my daily videos. And I was paying $200 a month to live in the camper at that time uh, on the property. And how I had worked at is I had been asking them throughout the I don't know, a year and a half or however long it was that I knew them, that if I could move out on the property. And when I came back, um, all the rooms had been rented out. And so I asked if I could give them a couple hundred dollars a month to stay on the property. And um, they needed the money. And so that's how the off-grid project started. And that's how I started living on the off-grid homestead. And the rest of it You've all followed. A lot of you have followed throughout the last three years. Time sure has gone by fast. And then I started, I fell in love with the property. It's a beautiful place. Down in the far back area. It's about a half mile long, I think, I'm estimating. Um, deep and pretty wide. Down deep in the far back area. There's actually a little bit of water that's there all year round. It's not it's not a creek or a stream. It's just runoff from the swamp, but uh, it goes into a little stream and there's little frogs in there. Um, it's it flows, so it's not it's not. I wouldn't drink it. It flows though, um, but it's just swamp runoff. But there's water back there. There's blueberries and strawberries and uh, two different kinds of raspberries. There's wild grapes. There's walnut and uh, hickory nut and maple and uh, birch trees and you can tap them for syrup and eat the nuts and fruits and it's a great place there's a lot of resources here a lot of wild game I estimate there's probably a hundred deer out here on the entire the entire property so I wanted to buy the land and negotiations lasted about an almost an entire year the negotiations for the land purchase and what I did was I purchased the land without any banks, without any credit, um, directly from the, the land owner through what is called a land contract. And what that is, is it's a legal and binding contract where you, the buyer, pay the original owner every month directly. So there's no interest. There's no uh, no banks, no credit check, no. Uh, you just you fill out a contract that is agreeable to both parties. It is notarized. It is checked by a lawyer, and signed by all parties. And everybody gets a copy. I filed copies in various locations as well for protection as a backup. So, um, it's. In New York, now other states might be different, but in New York, the land contract, uh, the buyer, has all the rights uh, of a homeowner. So it's the same rights as an actual homeowner would have. So if you buy a house through a bank on a mortgage, or you buy a property on a land contract, you have the same homeowner's rights. So if they were to step foot on the property, they'd be trespassing without my permission. Uh, that's why I was able to go hunting this year. I now have the hunting rights and all rights to the property. All complete and total rights to the property. Now you see I'm cleaning it up a lot because now it's it's mine. And uh, it's, it's, it's definitely worth my time and trouble. I'm removing 
garbage that was out there for years and has been so there so long it's under the dirt. Some of you may have seen some of that we pulled out when my friends were here. And i uh, going to slowly clean up the entire place. And I do want to get all the stuff out of here that I'm not using. Uh, anything but the tiny house on wheels and my, my garden and the chickens. So, well anyway, that's the, the history of how I, how I got the off-grid homestead. Now, just to summarize in short, because I skimmed over it a bit, the most important details, when you start out looking for a property, um, often older people can definitely use the extra income. So ask around, um, find people that have a lot of land, ask around and find out if they wouldn't mind sharing with you or selling you a chunk of it. Um, also check your local town ordinances and codes and laws though because some towns do not allow subdividing property and some towns don't look agreeable on campers, motorhomes, RVs or whatever and some could care less. Uh, there are some places that where you could rent from people without any worries and care about um, contracting issues and insurance and and there are some places that are very strict so ask around talk to old people that have property but then also check with the town to make sure that you're in compliance with all the laws and codes because that I have found can really get you um, as a lot of you have seen follow my my progress here uh, I ran into some trouble with well obviously I was turned into for things that weren't true but it taught me about the codes and the legal issues and stuff and how it's better to find all that out ahead of time so it'll save you some some headaches and trouble later but that's all history on my videos you can see all that what happened and the uh, the issues that came up with all that so anyway I hope that helps everybody that's looking for a property to start living off the grid but it's a uh, it's it's took me years it's been I think four years um, to get to where I am today from where I was just living up in the in the house to renting a, a spot on the property to now owning it so it's it was a progression um, you know some of you might get lucky and find a place where they're willing to sell a chunk of land right away others might have to follow this progression like me and others might have to live on the property a little bit longer some may even rent forever as long as you're happy and the uh, family that you're living with is happy and nobody's hurting anybody nobody's breaking any laws then go for it that's what I think is the way to do it um, so I hope that helps that's how I got my off-grid property for the off-grid homestead and uh, the tiny house on wheels so thanks for watching everybody Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project